Welcome back. In this video, we're going to solve right triangles, but now we're going to use our graphing calculator to help us calculate the values. Not every single triangle is a Pythagorean triple or is a special right triangle, so that makes the numbers a little bit more difficult. Um, also, the nice thing about trig is we might be given an angle measure and our calculator will know what the ratios are and it will be able to help us solve for the sides of a right triangle. So it is common in trig for angles to be labeled with capital letters. So here I have a triangle with capital letter A, B, and C. And angle C is our right angle. So we'll label the sides opposite those angles with the small letters. So the side opposite angle A is small letter A, the side opposite angle B is small letter B, the side opposite angle C is small letter C, or lowercase c. So given the angle 72, we want to find the length of side B. Well, we know that side C is 14. We're given that. So we know that is 14. And we want to find side B. And we have angle A, or the angle of 72 degrees. So if we think about our trig functions here, there is one trig function in particular that will help us. If our reference angle is 72, based on our reference angle, we're seeking the length of the adjacent side, and we have the hypotenuse. So we ask ourselves, what trig function involves adjacent and hypotenuse? Well, Chief Sokotoa will tell us that the cosine does. Okay, remember sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse, it's that ratio, and cosine is the ratio of the adjacent to the hypotenuse, and tangent is the ratio of the opposite over the adjacent. So in this sample, we'll go ahead and use our cosine function. The cosine of angle A, but in this case, 72 degrees, is equal to the adjacent side B over 14. But we, we want to solve for B. Well, hopefully we know that the cosine of 72 is some ratio. This really is a proportion. The cosine of 72 is going to be some fraction equals B over 14. But we don't know what that, that proportion is, but our calculator does, or what that ratio is. Now, the calculator will give, it, give this to us as a decimal. Okay, and we are working in degrees, so before we use our calculator, we need to make sure our calculator is in degree mode. And you can see here, I've got degree is not highlighted, radian is. So we want to cursor down and select degree and get our calculator in degree mode. So we've got that done. We can clear everything away. So if I wanted to, I've got the cosine key here. So cosine of 72 is this decimal, 0 0.30901644, um, you know, which really means for this particular triangle, if the adjacent side is 3,090 over 10,000 is really what our triangle is. Our triangle kind of looks like. We got a 10,000 for the hypotenuse, and this would be 3090, dot, 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 whatever that is. So for a triangle that's got an angle of 72 and a right angle, the adjacent would be 3090 to the hypotenuse of 10,000. So the nice thing about our calculator is it will do a lot of the work for us. 
So we want to solve for B. Well, I can multiply both sides by 14. And now I've isolated B. So I have 14 times the cosine of 72 equals B. This format here is what I would consider calculator ready. This is calculator calculator ready format to solve for our remaining side. So I know that the cosine of 72 is some number. In fact, it's this one. But calculator ready allows me just to say 14 cosine 72 equals 4.326. So rounding to the nearest hundredth, we would say that B equals 4.33, rounded to the nearest hundredth. So that is the length of the adjacent side. This side here is 4.33. Let's do another one. A little bit of a word problem here. We've got a hero that's standing atop a 314 foot cliff. So we've got a cliff and it's 314 feet high. And all cliffs make a right angle with the ocean. So we've got our ocean waves out here. Our hero standing atop the cliff sees a damsel in distress out in the ocean. Using his keen trigonometric eye, he determines that the angle of depression to be 38 degrees. So the angle of depression is the angle from the horizon, or looking straight ahead, from the horizon, and then look down. So the angle of depression, if my horizon is out this way, the angle of depression, when he sees his damsel in distress, that was not a very good straight line, is this one. It's from the horizon looking down. This is the angle that is 38 degrees. From the horizon, down. And since our ocean and our horizon are parallel, that makes that angle 38 degrees. They're alternate interior angles. And we want to find how far must our hero swim in order to save our damsel in distress. So we want to find this length x. So the question is, what trig function is going to work for us? Well, if our angle down here is 38 degrees, that is, we've got the opposite. We've got the height of our cliff is 314, and we want to find the adjacent. So we need a trig function that involves the opposite and adjacent, and that is tangent. So the tangent of 38 degrees equals the opposite. 314 over the adjacent x. Well, I don't like x in the denominator, so I have to multiply both sides by that x, and I get x times the tangent of 38 equals 314. Well, the tangent of 38 is some number. It's They go together. It's not tangent. It's not 38. It's the tangent of 38. So what we can do is we can divide both sides by the tangent of 38. I'm going to run out of room here. And we get x equals 314 divided by the tangent of 38. This, believe it or not, is in calculator-ready form. That is calculator-ready. So we go to our calculator, 
and we take 314 divided by the tangent of 38 degrees and we get 401.9. So our final answer, 401.9 feet that he must swim just to save the damsel in distress. Let's try another sample. A 40 foot ladder. Makes an angle, a 62 degree angle with the ground. So I have a ladder. How high up the building does the ladder hit? So let's give ourselves a building here. We've got this building. And we've got a ladder. Well, the ladder is 40 feet because the ladder leans up against our building and it makes a 62 degree angle with the ground. Our building over here makes a right angle with the ground. But our ladder also makes an angle of 62. So there's our diagram. 40 foot ladder. Makes sense that that's our ladder leaning against the building. Makes a 62 degree angle with the ground. And this is our angle of elevation. It's from the horizon looking up. Okay, so if you imagine yourself standing here and looking upwards, that's your angle of elevation. How high up the building does the ladder hit? So we want to find this length y. We want to know how high it is from the ground to where the ladder hits. Well, I've got a reference angle of 62. I've got a hypotenuse, and it looks like I'm working with the opposite. So I've got an opposite and a hypotenuse. Well, that is sine. So Katoa tells us that. So the sine of 62 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse y over 40. I want to solve for y, so I multiply both sides by 40 to get it in calculator ready form, which is 40 sine of 62 equals y. Now I don't really care what the sine of 62 is. I know it's going to be some decimal or some ratio, but I just type into my calculator 40 sine of 62 I get my value of 35.3. So my building is 35.32. My ladder hits 35.32 feet up the side of our building. So there's some sample problems solving right triangles using our trig functions and our calculator. So we will see you in class.